I don't know if anybody saw this article going viral on Twitter, because I'm obviously very Twitter-brained, but this has gone very viral, this one, um, amongst the kind of left-leaning sections of Twitter. Uh, and the article is called We Should Cheer the Decline of Humanities Degrees by this Times journalist called Emma Duncan. Basically, the main thesis of the article that she's writing here is that essentially what's happened is that people can't get enough good jobs with their humanities degrees because the competition is too high. Um, and she actually mentions in the article here um, the idea that we've created, we've got an overabundance of people who expect to be members of the elites, which actually isn't true. People don't expect to be members of the elites. They just expect, you know, decent wages, which they're not getting. That's due, That's the rising disenchantment with democ the democratic process at the moment, is people just don't have good jobs at all. Um, no matter where they are on the pay scale, we're still seeing wages compressed, but that's a story for another time. Uh, by another time, I mean every string, single stream. But her main thesis here is that the reason why humanities degrees are dropping is because they're not as financially viable as degrees in like STEM subjects. Uh, and that she feels that Tony Blair and the new Labour administration were were misguided by the idea they wanted half of the people in the country to go to university to be able to be educated. Um, not because she thinks that it's bad to have an educated populace, but because she views education fundamentally uh, as an economic decision rather than a decision that you make to enhance your own personal level of education. Because, of course, education cannot be good uh, in and of itself. It can only be good when being seen in an economic context. Because in the entirety of this article, she makes the point that, well, humanities degrees aren't as financially viable as, to say, a STEM degree, which is true. And then she says people are turning away from it because it means that they're less likely to pay off their student debt, which is also true. Yeah, her central thesis is, yeah, it's good that humanities aren't getting degrees anymore. If you want to get a degree, if you want to get a job in the arts sector, for example, out of luck, right? Out of luck because you just it's not financially viable enough for you to be able to do that. Even if you may become a more learned person afterwards, even if it may help some people get onto the be able to get onto the career ladder for that kind of stuff, it's fine that the if prohibitive cost of education pushes out certain people towards only being used as an economic tool rather than a uh, general kind of educational tool for these people. At no point in the entirety of this article does she say, for example, maybe, maybe we shouldn't uh, massively increase the price of university so that the only people who can justify getting onto the humanities degrees in the first place are people from wealthy backgrounds, right? People from privileged backgrounds who don't have to worry about the exorbitant costs. Um, those are the only people that she thinks under this system should be able to get, get humanities degrees because they're the people who can afford to take the risk on your degree not being as financially viable as a STEM degree, for example. And even then, you, as Big Al points out in chat, you know, there's still plenty of places available for people who have degrees in um, things from the humanities, for example. And they don't even make up the top 10 of university degrees anyway, right? Like, sure, it's not wrong that there's a large section of, I think, our generation particularly, who are not getting incredibly wealthy jobs off of the English degree that they got, for example. But do you think they went in there thinking that they were going to get an amazing job off the back of, the hit of their English degree? I really don't think that they did. I think they just wanted to study English because... You know, to be able to increase the amount of education they're getting, like a more learned person, a better member of society, right? But of course, this is a person who believes that there should always be a financial gatekeep to all of these things, and that poor people, if they want to get into social mobility, for example, they should just, you know, maybe they should have been born with a better spawn point, they should have had wealthier parents to be able to pay them through university um, with the exorbitant costs given the increase in tuition fees. At no point she said the correct thing, which was lowering the tuition fees, right? making it more affordable so that it's not gatekept behind the amount of money that your parents make during this. It's a really, really, a really, really strange, really, really a poor article from somebody essentially just believing that there should be uh, an elite class of people based upon uh, nepotism rather than on ability, rather than on the kind of just world that these rightoid fuckers think that there should be, the think makes is what does exist, when really it's not a meritocracy, it's always been a, a, a corporatocracy and a kleptocracy, kleptocracy and a plutocracy all at the same time, uh, and a, a nepotocracy full of people um, who only get there due to knowing the right people, having the rich parents, etc, etc, through uh, things like inheritance. It's just the most brazenly 
classist article because it just essentially assumes that you know if you're from a poorer background then you know you shouldn't be wanting to make yourself educated you should be getting a, a well-paid job or just going and working in some kind of apprenticeship for example i'm not wrong with nothing wrong with that literally nothing wrong with getting an apprenticeship doing get, getting into trade school and earning your crust through that matter that's great that's brilliant we should definitely be incentivizing that again because it's building skills right it's building skills getting people in education putting people into a position where they can sell their skills within the economy great brilliant no struggle with that no problem with that whatsoever and in fact there should be more open more positions available for these kind of things but that shouldn't be at the expense of letting people who do have the aptitude for things like humanities etc from poorer backgrounds being able to get into those positions to be able to compete for the the tighter job market in those areas because by saying that well you know we're going to make the, the cost prohibitive because then it means you only get into economically viable positions all that means is is that you keep an elite nepotistic bubble around the kind of jobs that humanities degrees would lend them to so this is a pretty shit article oh but the 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 rabbit hole my friends the rabbit hole doesn't stop there it doesn't stop there at all can you guess right i'm gonna give people in my audience in my chat i'm gonna give you one guess as to where she went to university one guess as to what she studied at that university and a third guess and a third singular guess as to where she went to school before going to university can you guys hazard a tiny little guess as to her own background that got her into the position of being a times columnist in the first place oxbridge pp in winchester well it was a, it was wickham abbey school in buckinghamshire which is a private school worth thirty thousand pounds a year literally for, for day school right it's thirty six thousand pounds a year because it's 12 12k per term right that's wickham abbey the, the the boarding school that she went to and she went to oxford and she studied ppe it's unreal the level of gigantic mind-bending hypocrisy that these people will go to like yeah humanities degrees are trash i studied pp at oxford i studied pp at oxford that's it right i you i you, you just cannot believe the the temerity of these people you cannot believe the temerity of these people you're obviously working at the economist as well and now after you know being paid through a very expensive education studying the the mickey mouse degree of oxford university the i can't be bothered to actually provide any use to society so i'm going to study ppe and then get a nepotistic place uh, in the journalism industry and steal a fucking living writing what i found out to be two articles a month for the murdoch hack media and the best part is the nepotism rabbit hole does not end there chat the, nep the nepotism rabbit hole does not end there because i found out this person's grandfather was the governor general of, of apartheid south africa no fucking shit right no shit her grandfather was the governor general of apartheid south africa you you, you can't make this shit up you cannot make this shit up to be fair i'm gonna be fair to this person right now her father who was the son of the governor general, governor general of apartheid South Africa, was an anti-apartheid activist, right? Uh, and he died of an illness at age, 47, age 49, I believe it was, after fighting against apartheid, which is cool, which is based, right? No shade on that. And then her mum moved from South Africa back to the UK and married a fucking Tory MP! So her stepfather is literally a conservative, was a conservative member of parliament. It's, it's literally these people are stealing a living and they've they, they they produce nothing and have just been gifted a career in the media with no skills from being paid through it by their by their nepo baby roots i it's just it's, it's, it's and then she's the one saying that we should remove social mobility by ensuring that we don't change the tuition fee system so that poor kids can't study the humanities subjects that she fucking studied to get into a position of stealing a living, writing two articles a week for the Times. 
it's it's utterly outrageous and then the best part as well after all of this is her articles for the times are absolute dog shit as well right including this one which is her getting mad about brexit because it meant that she didn't couldn't get eastern europeans to to wash her car for 12 pounds right bemoaning the fact that there weren't eastern europeans willing to wash her car cheaply so now she has to be able to put the gloves on and do it herself right other articles uh, include saying that Britain actually isn't, isn't that unequal. It's not as unequal as Germany, for example, even though it's more unequal than Slovenia, for example. So I don't know what the fuss is about, about the UK being unequal. What the NHS needs is more managers, more people to steal a living on the public expense, right, rather than more doctors or nurses. Literally two articles about the NHS needing more managers. Trust has given some good policies a bad name, just, you know, uh, out there just com be playing uh, lip service to the worst prime minister this country's had in decades who had to quit after 44 days being embarrassed by the daily star and the lettuce for example incredible incredible and there's one there's the icing on the cake there's the absolute icing on the cake from all of this uh is that she did an article where she was praising kathleen stock because, of course, you can't be an overpaid, privately educated, Oxbridge educated, Times journalist stealing a living without being a turf these days. Can't do it. Doesn't, doesn't ever happen. These are blog posts, right? This isn't a serious career. These are fucking blog posts. And this is, what, this is what counts for journalism in the UK. This is what counts towards being a journalist in the UK. This is how little work you have to do. This is how, this is how completely nepotistic the entire industry is. And they then have a cheek to come back at us. They could come back at us and say that the real issue, the real big issue here is the fact that there's too much social mobility and that there's too many working class people who want to study humanities. What an absolute fucking weapon. What a gigantic weapon. And this was the same person. This was the same person as well. Oh my God, it gets even worse, right? This same person also said that they're hurting Oxbridge in the name of, of, name of equality by favouring state school pupils, right? Given that she came from private school herself, she's saying, well, actually, no, the issue really isn't the fact that there is a... The education apartheid between um, state schools and private schools, which m massively over-benefit private education in this country. And she's the one saying, well, actually, we need fewer state school pupils in Oxbridge fewer state school pupils who'd access to social mobility honestly these people these people are absolute vermin the world is better off without them fucking hell absolute absolute disgrace if you enjoyed this video please do consider liking and subscribing it does help out the channel and the algorithm and if you click the bell notification icon it will let you know when i go live and when i upload videos if you'd like to follow me on social media my handle is at no justice mtg and that is twitter tiktok facebook instagram twitch and youtube if you want to support my channel in a more financial manner, you can do so by becoming a member for just 99p, by super chatting, or by supporting me on Patreon, with the link is in the description of this video, and hopefully I'll catch you on the next segment.